Okay, so we're back again and I wanted to show you what this looks like when you have filled in the entire page um, with all of your flowers. And so now here comes the fun. You can either go ahead and just leave it as a black and white drawing. That's fine whether you're using marker or whether you're using pencil or you can go ahead and color it in. So when you're using Sharpie marker or if you were to do this in crayon also the same thing would apply. You can go over the top with watercolor and it really does go quite fast. So I'm going to take my brush and let's start out painting this nice big sunflower that is right in the middle. I'm just going to take some yellow here on my palette and dip my brush in some water and then I'm just going to start painting these shapes kind of going back with a um, zigzag um, kind of motion with my brush. You can see how I'm pushing the tip of the brush right onto the end there of that little shape. So this is a really good way to color in your drawing and like I said before this really does work well too with pencil. You can use watercolor really well over the top of pencil if you want. It also works beautifully over crayon as well. Okay, so if you don't want to use uh, paint though, you can always color this in with crayons or whatever you have on hand and that works just as nicely as well. Okay, so there we go. We have our beautiful yellow sunflower already just laying down some color. Now I want to show you how to do these beautiful big roses. These are some of my favorites. I'm going to go for one of my most favorite colors which happens to be pink. And so I'm taking some of this color here on my brush and then I'm going to go do this kind of circular motion and use the tip of the brush and slow down when I come to the edge of the flower and that's because I want to make sure that I get that curve nice and accurate and so that's a good idea to slow down when you get to those little areas. Okay, and Don't worry if you go off the edge, that does happen sometimes and I can show you a way to clean up your edges as well. So there we have some pink for the rose and I'm going to go ahead and just make some big bold strokes for this other rose over here as well. Make some circular strokes and slowing down with the tip of my brush once I get to the edge. There we go. Taking a little bit more color. Here we go. Just painting in those shapes. Okay. And then I'm going to go for some alizarin crimson, which is this really nice, brilliant red. And I want to show you what happens when you have paint on there that's really wet. You can just go ahead and also paint over the top of it. And if the um, layer underneath is wet, what will happen is it will all blend together. This is a technique in watercolor that is called wet and wet, when you have two colors that are blending together on your page. Okay. And then I am also going to take some yellow and mix it with my pink. Wow, look at that. I get this beautiful orange. And I want to show you another trick with watercolor too, or should I say technique. Um, and you take your pink, a little bit of the yellow, and you put lots of water with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint these tulips. And notice how we get this really nice soft peach color and the color is not dark, it's more like a pastel color and that's because we're using lots of water. So the trick with watercolor is if you want to get light colors just go ahead and use more water and then it will dry nice and light on your page. Okay, so there we have our beautiful little tulips. So the idea is just to keep going all over your page and just adding layers. Now I'm going to take that bright pink, the same color this time I'm going to use lots and lots of water and I'm going to paint this flower because I want this to look like little cherry blossom so it's not going to be dark it's going to be like a soft pink pale pink and it's the exact same color look at that but just mixed with lots of water okay and let's take some orange and if you don't have orange then just mix yellow and red together and then I'm going to make some centers on these flowers 
and just let it dry put like another center over here as well okay so now I'm going to show you how to do your um, leaves just for fun why don't we go ahead and mix some yellow and then let's take some blue because yellow and blue make green and look at that it's so fun to experiment mixing your own colors now just say that you weren't working with paints you were working with crayons you can actually do the same thing you can put down yellow first and blue over the top and then you will get a green so same thing just different materials I'm painting in some of these really pretty leaves and I'm working pretty fast okay now I'm going to show you another awesome technique for color mixing so here we have our green right so we're going to actually dip our brush just into the pure blue and now we're going to just dot a little bit of color over the top of the other green so this is still a green but it's a little bit more of a bluish green now I'm going to rinse my brush out you always want to make sure that you swish your brush around a couple of times before you get a new color because you don't want to mix the colors together and get muddy colors so I cleaned my brush off really well by switching it off now I'm going to go and put some yellow right here so now we have these two different greens that we mixed it's just simply by adding more blue or in this case we add a lot more yellow alright and now we're going to take some Let's, why don't we do some purple that would be really fun you can use some blue and then let's go ahead and take a little bit of pink with it if you don't have pink you can just go ahead and use red as well because red and um, blue make purple isn't that a pretty color so I am going to use this to paint in some of these tiny little flowers and because they're really tiny I have to use the tip of my brush and just kind of spotting is what we call that when you just kind of make little dots and that helps fill in those small gaps because sometimes if you're trying to use your brush in a small area it's easy to go over the edges so you can just make these little dots and that'll really help you get right into those little small areas here we go some more purple okay all right, I'm going to come back in now and use some of my pink. This time I'm going to use lots of water with it and just go right over this flower. And then I'm also going to make some blue. Mix some blue up here with lots of water because I kind of want a soft blue. So here it is on my palette. And then I'm going to use this for these daisies. These ones right here on the end here. Okay, just using all different color mixes, and this is a great opportunity for you to use your favorite colors and then try mixing them and see what you come up with. You can always mix them first on your palette and uh, see if you like the color. If you don't like the color, just try something else. This is all about having fun and experimenting. And one of the ways that you will really learn to grow in your skills is simply by experimenting. And that's how I've learned lots of tricks um, on how to paint and draw. Uh, lots and lots of practice. I've made tons of mistakes. And sometimes mistakes is really all about learning. So I encourage you just to kind of play around and see where you go with it. Now this time I'm going to take the same color using the point of my brush and go ahead and paint in some of these really nice long leaves these curvy ones for our tulips see those so it's starting to really take shape now that we have a few colors down you can see how beautiful this looks when you start adding all of the color so I'm just gonna let this dry and we'll take a break and come back in a minute 